will Joe Rogan ask? Is it me or is he being an ass? Liquid. He thought water. this interview would be fun, but Joe's talking to him like a joke. Drink water, you're part of the greed. You want to do uh, Joe Rogan and Tom Green? This is fucking good. Tom Green rocks, by the way. Tom Green rules in a way where he's getting under Rogan's skin. And I think he's messing with Rogan. Uh, he had him on again. It's his second appearance during the quarantine. And the last time he was on, Joe Rogan did kind of the same thing with him. You know, Tom Green is a fucking wacky guy. Joe Rogan don't really mesh well with wacky and Joe knows what Tom Green is, so it's weird that Joe Rogan invites Tom Green on because it clearly is agitating for Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is agitated by absurdity, goofidity, weirdity. So it's weird that Joe Rogan keeps bringing him on only to become frustrated with Tom Green. And uh, while I don't necessarily, I'm not like a fan of Tom Green, like I'm sure if I watch just the Tom Green show, I'd be bored. But the dynamic between Joe getting angry and Tom Green recognizing that anger and trying to get under his skin is quite fascinating and great. And at first I thought Tom Green was being a Dumas, right? Harold Dumas from the Dumas Rug Company. But then somebody told me, no, Tom Green is like super smart and he knows what he's doing, kind of. And he is this neurotic, weird, eccentric klutzy paranoid guy but at the same time he's smart and he's passive aggressive and he's non-confrontational but when he's offended just kind of like tim but even lighter when he's offended he doesn't he's not blatant about it he just will like if you offend tom green he'll just annoy you a little bit more and play <laughs> dumb i it could be or it could be just a happy coincidence. Either way, we're going to watch Joe Rogan at his worst. And, you know, it's hard to say when he's at his worst. Almost every day it's worse than the next with Rogan. That's what's been happening. He is um, mean, impatient, uh, ununderstanding, rude, um, unaware, aloof, and uh, all in all, uh, not a role model anymore he, he needs to take some time off with the show and meet with the therapist to figure out what's going on with him because he's uh, about to throw this nobody knows it. it's about to throw this whole thing down the drain because you're not seeing the same rogan that you used to see he's uninterested he's uh not as curious he's more there to uh what do they call that when like an officer pulls you in the little room and sits you down He's interrogating the guest rather than asking them questions that he's interested in. And people aren't having a fun time on this show anymore. They're frankly, uh, again, under interrogation. They feel like, uh, you know, what the hell did I do here? Why is this guy turning on me? And uh, it all in all makes for an awkward and unfun experience for his fans. For me, couldn't be better. And today we're going to watch Joe uh, do what he does best. Get annoyed, handle it like a fucking baby, and treat someone like fucking shit. Isn't that going to be great? Oh, where, yes. Yeah, this is great. Off last the time. boys start drinking, and neither of them are good. You know, Joe's going to really make a fool of himself today. So if you're a fan of Joe, consider it. Uh, and we feel bad for Tom Green, but at the same time, like, I can't be a standalone fan of Tom Green. It's just too boring. I mean, it's not for me, but in this situation, I love Tom Green. And he has my heart right now. All Same. Right? Uh, remember, Tom Green, since COVID, very paranoid about COVID, bought a ton of cans of ragu pasta sauce, thinking that that was a health supplement almost. And uh, remember, Joe Rogan made fun of him. But since then, Tom Green has moved into a van, a la Tim Pool. With a dog, a dog in a van. And the dog's name is Charlie. Charlie. But Joe keeps and he calling brought it Chopper. Well, yeah, we're gonna uh he's in a van alone with a dog named Charlie that he adopted. It was a uh fuck if I can remember this right, it was a what kind of dog? A pocket dog, a poke dog, a pit 
dog, remember? And this dog would walk around and eat rice from people in <laughs> Peru or something, right? And he adopted it. And uh, he lives in a van with his dog, and he's been circling the country. He wears a cowboy hat now. He's grown his hair out. So um, we're going to watch this, and they're going to start drinking, which is always a bad idea on Rogan, to start drinking because he really can't handle it. He can't handle it. Oh, there's my man, my kettle, and he's wearing his promotional Triller shirt. All right, let's see what happens. Why Why 10 p.m.? That's so arbitrary. <laughs> you tell me you can't catch COVID between 6 and 10. Like There's going to be some sort of a, a thing that happens. After 10, people are more, more vulnerable. Get drunk COVID talk. It it's COVID nonsense, talk. Man. It's nonsense. Yeah. These fucking assholes are imposing rules on people that close their businesses down you still for no on reason. The show you want a drink? Sure. Oh. That's what you want? If, if so you Tom, have one, right. yeah. Tom Green out of nowhere, and this is what's so weird. If Tom Green didn't drink, I'd be like, oh, he's like a paranoid nerd. But he, you know what's good about Tom Green? He's got surprises around every twist. Around every door, there's a twist and a surprise and a turn. I like that about people. You know what I say about people like that, Jules? What? Characters welcome. Yes. And when Tom Green, he does a surprise. Out of nowhere, Joe Rogan's rambling, and Tom Green goes, you know what? I'm bored with this bullshit COVID. You still drink on the show, bro? Let's have a drink. And you're going, Tom Green doesn't seem like the guy who would insist that we have a drink. 117 into the show, he sees Joe's in a bad mood. So this shows me Tom Green is smart. He sees, look at Joe Rogan's getting picky. Joe Rogan's getting, because Tom Green listens to all the shows of Joe Rogan. So he knows, and Tom Green is a planning guy. He loves planning and worrying and stressing. So he goes, if Joe Rogan starts doing too much COVID, I know I'm going to get out of there. And he makes these plans to himself in his head while he's in that van with that dog, Charlie. Charlie D'Amelio. <laughs> and he sees Joe looking like this. And when I see Joe looking like this, I go, dude. Run. Run, man, because he's going to start picking at you. Right? So Tom Green goes, you still drink on the show? Let's have a drink. And Joe Rogan can't say no. He would look like a bitch, right? So let's see what happens. Down. You still For drinking no on reason. the show? Or? You want a drink? Sure. That's what you want? If, if, okay. If, I'll have one. All right. Yeah. Am I getting you nervous? All Ooh, this crazy. So look what Joe's doing at time. And look at Tom's little face here. Shut the fuck up, bitch. I was <laughs> bullied by fucking idiots like you in high school. You think you do comedy? I'm only here because your show's huge. So just like Tim, he holds some resentment towards Joe because he knows Joe sucks. He know Tom Green is another guy like Tim where it's like, okay, you don't really think of him that much, but... He's put in a lot of work into comedy, more than Joe has, in fact. Tom Green, whether you like his material or his bit, his nonsense or not, he was another innovator in comedy and broadcasting and doing his own show. And he knows that Joe sat around doing zip, zilch, nada. He knows it looked like crap. He knows Joe's is kind of crap. So when Joe sits there and he's being mean to him, he comes up with a little plan, don't he? You don't treat Tom Green like this. He's worked too hard. And I think he's going to take it out on Joe in his own way. Let's watch. Did you talk of COVID? No, you just mentioned alcohol, and I oh. thought, hey, you still drinking on the show? Yeah, we can have some booze, sort of. Jamie, go. let's get us some whiskey. Ooh. Some Texas whiskey. <laughs> and some glasses. <laughs> no cringe. ice. Cringe. We're going like men today. No ice. Fuck it. What kind of whiskey are you drinking here in Texas? Whatever we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have a, do you have a favorite? These. Uh, this is not a good mix of people. Literal Joe with obscure green it's not a good mix i mean this is joe's worst nightmare but he keeps they th he thinks that gotta keep having him on i think joe always feels like he's mean to tom green so he keeps having him on to like make up for it but then he acts meaner than the last time i think that's what you're seeing a lot of overlapping of guilt look at joe's little face when he looks at tom he thinks tom is stupid and tom thinks joe is a fucking fraud dick but they're gonna play podcast together let's see if that works out uh i've been drinking bushmills that's good stuff i like yeah. buffalo trace oh yeah we had that <laughs> Two last reasons. time it's a sponsor mm -hmm. and oh. they've been around since before america you have a whiskey sponsor is that even legal uh so you're a spot you're doing an alcohol ads buffalo trace i didn't know that see i don't listen to the podcast version he doesn't disclose who his advertisers are on the youtube version I just thought he loved Buffalo Trace. 
because he's brought up that whiskey many times. So they're a sponsor. Interesting. Sales guy. Started. Ah, okay. They're, they've been around since 1773. I see. Ad really read. Great. They won like Whiskey Maker of the Year 2020. Might be the only yeah. reason he drinks on the show is because of this sponsorship. Wow. Bad guy. Bad ball. Yeah, okay, so there it is. Tom Green, and this is where Sam, let's have a drink. Oh, you want a drink? You sure? What are you, nervous? That's what he said to him. Yeah. So Joe was trying to talk him out of it. Tom Green didn't back down. He goes, bring the whiskey now. All right. Um, I'm quite che- cheering on the underdogs tonight, huh? Same. Cheering on the underdogs. They okay. go to 150 to hear about Joe's favorite music. 150 Joe's favorite music. I might interested. remind you of someone else we know. Okay. Well, let's see what Papa has to say. He reminds me of my grandfather's age. Doesn't he look like a little cigar? He looks like, you know, have you seen those uh, art things where someone takes a pencil and then they make a tiny sculpture at the end of a pencil? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see he's carved out of pencil wood. Oh, what no, kind of... they carve it out of the lead of the pencil. It's oh, very okay. tiny. If you what know what kind I of mean. wood? Ooh, these uh, wings are delicious. These are smoked? Yeah. What kind of wood do you use to smoke these? Cherry or... Uh... <laughs> it's actually pencil wood. With lead and erasers and the... <laughs> Metal. Metal. And a mechanical pencil in there, too, and a pen. <laughs> and uh, bind- Paper. a binder, <laughs> plastic five star notebook that melted. You eat that. It's good. Oh, you like the wings. All right. So, uh, what's happening here? 150 00. Um, you'll hear it. When okay. It let's see what happens here. Giant fan in the streets of yeah. New York. I still occasionally I'll listen that's, to that, that song, that's Cock Blocking. Yeah. D- cool G Rap, oh, Cock rap. Blocking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some great yeah. fucking songs, man. Streets of New York, man. That's what's a great song. I love East Coast hip hop. Yeah. Know? Oh. Um, Tribe Called Quest. Yeah. Low End Theory is my favorite album of he all time. You don't know it. Mm. Went, oh, mm, your favorite. Do you know what that is? You love rap, huh? When did you listen to rap? In your uh, Camaro with the T-tops down? He was the guy who had like cars with T-tops and he'd show up to high school with like T-tops and a leather jacket. He was that much of an asshole. You didn't listen to No Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> okay, that's for sensitive Men. Whenever asked me what's my favorite album of all time, I say the Low End Theory, Trap Called Quest. If I had to pick one rapper that I'm, well, I don't know, Biggie is oh. pretty top on the list, but also Nas. Oh, of course not. <laughs> Biggie, Nas. Ah, the white man's rap answer. I love it. Like, there's something about Nas's lyrics. Like, Nas has the best lyrics. Oh, like, of course. The best lyrics. Yeah. Well, you should probably listen to his last 16 albums <laughs> and then tell me how good those lyrics were. Anyways, right. couldn't resist that one. Yeah, anyways, couldn't resist. Very funny. 204.15. This was where it starts getting really good. Okay. And this is going to be one of those red bar rides. So hang on to your butts. 204.15. And uh, any, do we need to know anything here? You're going to know. We're going to know. So look at Tom Green, and Tom is, he ain't leaving until he feels that everything kind of worked out, (laughs) all right? And he's very worried about how he's going to come off and be, I mean, this is a big deal. This show is almost too big to be on without, you know, a stagehand and a publicist. It's almost too taxing on the mind of a simple guy. So let's see uh, what happens here. Mentally ill, Tom Green. I don't let things go. Yeah. It's, no, it's beautiful, though, man, because it's, it's great to see. I mean, here we are in, first of all, the, the UFO studio, which I love. Okay. And- hey, whoa, here we are in the UFO studio. So both of these guys, out of fear, start complimenting each other to high hell almost every five minutes. Yes. Repeating the same compliments over and over again. Joe, oh, I was so inspired by you. In your studio. Joe, I love what you did, and I'm inspired by you because you proved that you can make it work. Okay, we got it. And we learned that on the last show a million times, too. So Tom Green goes, he just doesn't know what to say. He goes, I love, uh, well, the studio, this UFO that you've built. And we all know, Joe Rogan knows, if he knows one thing, it's 
No one likes the studio. Okay. Joe, no. Joe, no. And uh, so when people bring up the studio, Joe instantly goes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. save it. Save your pleasantries, okay? I know the studio sucks, but what you're going to see here today is Joe take on another excuse. Instead of, you know, and, and it happens. Sometimes you make a, a goof. He's not a designer, right? He's not an interior decorator. Surely he does enough things that if he's not an interior decorator, we could get over it, right? It wasn't about that. Yeah, the studio was an epic fail, a giant L. It was how he handled it. He pretended it wasn't. He pretended we were stupid for thinking that it was bad. He pretended it was great. And he got mad and resentful towards the audience for just stating what he even knew. The studio's ridiculous. Fucking red. Tear it down. And instead of just going, hey, man, I'm not an interior designer. This place does suck. We're tearing it down. We're building a new one. People would cheer him on if he did that. Instead, he's pretending like this was phase one and that there's always been a new studio in the works. And he is, in fact, building a new studio because he knows this sucks, but he's going to pretend it was always the plan. And that's, we're just, this is the problem when you, you don't- You think we're stupid? You think we were born yesterday? And this is why you got to read the comments. You kind of have to participate with the rest of the world if you want to talk to the rest of the world, because otherwise you think we're fucking stupid- and you lie to us like this, and now we start hating you. Start digging in. So listen to this. I don't let things go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, it's beautiful, though, man, because it's, it's great to see. I mean, here we are in, first of all, the, the UFO studio, which I love. Oh, you love and it. And I, I wanted to ask you some questions about it. Okay. If um, What Sorry. is the inspiration for this incredible... Chinese restaurants. Ooh. No disrespect. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. Here we go. Ch was it Chinese restaurant or was that what everyone was calling it? Are you mocking us for making fun of your red shithole no. room? Are you mocking us, Joe? Because I'll take you, I'll put you in the ball return. I'll dry my hands off and then I'll bowl a spare with you. <laughs> you rotund circle. You're going to mock us for your mistakes? It ain't happening. Okay. If, um, what is the inspiration for this incredible- Chinese in restaurants. No oh. disrespect. Oh, 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 oh. Love Chinese restaurants. Oh, there wow. I didn't, I actually didn't even Watch notice this. that, that, that <laughs> until now. I'm joking. I hope people don't get mad at me for that. No, they I won't. I love it. Chinese restaurants. It does feel like that. It's not though. negative. No, it's uh, No, honestly. It's not, oh, it's not and that. And then Joe gets scared that he's going to get in trouble for cultural appropriation. <laughs> Because he joked, oh, Chinese, and then he's like, fuck, I can't say it's a Chinese restaurant. That could be a cancellation thing with the Chinese. So he starts backpedaling. No, 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 that and was just a joke, and there's nothing wrong with the Chinese. This is what he's become. And don't you think that Tom is clearly messing he with him here? Well, cause Tom, like he's looking listen, around going, oh, what is you inspired by? Tom like is a broadcast geek. He watches every episode of Rogan because to him it's very interesting. Even if he doesn't like the show, it's so interesting what people like. He was the first person to do a show out of his house. He's very into this. He knows exactly what the feedback on the studio has been. It's like what he studies. And so he's seeing how real joe is almost or at least how real he's gonna be to him he's testing he him. knows he fucking knows even notice that that, that until now i'm joking i hope people don't get mad at me for that no they I won't. love chinese Look at restaurants. This. it does feel like that it's not though. negative see what well, happens I'm... when you lie now you're caught in the cancellation worry isn't that a nice place to be where you can't even make a joke without going oh please i didn't mean it this is what happens when you spotify you and your family no, honestly, it's not. Oh, it's not that. It I, was. Uh, this was the the whole idea behind it. We, uh, Matt Alvarez, who's the guy who built it, and I, we were we we're thinking of like what to do with the space. There was a circular space like this. The shape of the space is already oh, there. Oh no, like, no! There was a circular space. The shape of the space was already there. Untrue. Hmm. We have photos of it being under construction where we watched you build the framework for the curved space, and we could pull that up. It's off his uh, Instagram. He's just making up lies. It was already, so people go, why would you make a curved studio? So did not sound dumb. He's going to go, oh, well, it was already a circular space. We didn't know what to do. So we scrambled. No, no, no. 
You made it circular, I remember, and we have proof, and it's coming. What an asshole, right? It's not, oh, it's not that? It I... was, uh, this was the, the whole idea behind it. We, uh, Matt Alvarez, who's the guy who built it, and I, we were, we were thinking of like what to do with this space. There was a circular space like this. The shape of the space is already there. And I was like, that'd be kind of cool no, to have a podcast. it was a, uh, here it is. And then we is. found out that they have these. So it was a square room. Otherwise, you wouldn't need to build curved scaffolding or framework here. They all built it. JRE Texas Studio setup has begun. So there, I don't know where you are where you got a curved space here. In a silo? Where's the fucking curve? Where do you find a curved space like this? The sewer system? We decided to do the show in the sewer. You know how sewers are. So we put a bunch of wood and a bunch of electrical in the pipe. <laughs> no, no, no. You built this from scratch. Here's the proof. Unless I got that wrong, it was a circular place where they were putting wood over the circles. I, I choose to believe he's lying. He's lying. Down panels that look like this. And you can make them in different designs. You can yeah. cho choose... What designs again? Like, oh, those would be kind of dope as like things on the wall. And we just put it together. And he did it all within five or six weeks of the time. That's we a long time. You could build Trump Tower in that time. He did it all in like just only five to six years. It's not, you know, you didn't really have anything. It's we not an built excuse. We built your whole studio here in one day. And look at his face. <laughs> Does this look like the face of a guy who's enjoying this excuse? <laughs> this crunchy eyed fucking can't use it. It's Tim Dillon's term. Here you go. We decided we we're going to move here, so it happened so quick. Mm -hmm. So what he's done, you know, with all this design and everything is we just ran with it, you know? It wasn't, it wasn't anything that was thought out. When people are like, God, it's weird in there. Like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. You don't I'm like it. No one likes it. Not a human being, not an animal. No one likes it. I've seen squirrels look in there and they go, ah! and they run the fuck out. <laughs> they hate it. Dogs won't enter. Snakes don't survive. You can't keep anything alive in this room. It's a suck. <laughs> so uh, let's see what else. what events do this. They, they could suck. <laughs> Got a lot of sucking going on in this room from the people to the vents to the air purifier. <laughs> but uh, this is not the end. This oh. is what I needed to get in here. Listen. This is like, Think of this as the spaceship that takes us from the L.A. podcast studio Watch to the this. Texas podcast studio. The Texas podcast so studio. So this is great. Like any other person would be like, oh, great, the spaceship, nice. What do you think about COVID? Tom Green does this. It's under construction currently. Yeah. So when all that's, this is our wait, spaceship. Wait, this is not the Texas podcast studio? We're in a spaceship. We've traveled <laughs> from one podcast studio through right. this yeah. spaceship into the next Oh, so this is not the studio. studio. This is not the ultimate destination, Oh, we're Tom not in Green. the studio. Oh, no. Whoa! Oh no! Oh, we're, this is a spaceship. Just a spaceship. We're not in this. This isn't the Texas studio. Just to be clear, he would oh, not let him breeze past. So that. this is a spaceship, and Joe's like, <laughs> the commenters. Look at those eyes. He's like, you're gonna look me in the eye and tell me this is a spaceship and not the real studio. <laughs> Do you see what you're doing to my eyes? You're bagging them. <laughs> you're bagging them more. My tears are internal and you're filling up these water bags. They're going to freaking pop and blood's going to shoot out of my under eye. You asshole. <laughs> so look at this funny exchange. Tom Green rules. Right. Yeah. So People when all that's, this is our wait, spaceship. Wait, this is not the Texas podcast studio? We're in a spaceship. We've traveled from one podcast studio through right. this yeah. spaceship into the next oh so this is not the studio this is not the ultimate destination oh we're not Tom in the Green. studio no oh this is the spaceship leading us from oh, one okay. studio to the next i thought studio. i was in the studio so there's a new oh. studio coming oh <laughs> look at joe oh i thought i was in the studio so there's a new studio coming <laughs> Look at the little, and there is a little. There's no way that he doesn't know. Like, it's just impossible. Listen, and since we've been wearing masks, I could tell when it smiles with his eyes. <laughs> oh, oh, this is the studio. Gotcha. And then Joe's like, ah, fucking piece of shit. <laughs> no one would understand if I attacked you, but I want to smash your head into the fucking vents. <laughs> Look. New studio. Coming. When's that going to be? Oh! Okay, we go back for a second. Being, this is war. All right, watch this shit. Podcast studio? We're in a spaceship. 
we've traveled from one podcast studio through right. this yeah. spaceship into the next. Oh, so this is not the studio. This is not the ultimate destination. Oh, we're not in the studio. No. Oh, this is the spaceship leading us from oh, one okay. studio to the next. I thought studio. I was in the studio. So there's a new studio coming. New studio. Coming. When's that going to be? Ooh. When? Oh. Ooh, he's fucking furious. But Tom Green's such a nerd, he can't do nothing. <laughs> He'd look terrible. This rock. So he's so mad. Let's see this in Tom Green again. It's like everyone else knows how to move on, right? When Joe, Joe mad. And Tom Green just likes to pick, pick, pick into the next. Oh, so this is not the studio. This is not the ultimate destination. Oh, we're not in the studio. No. Oh. This is the spaceship (laughs) leading us from one studio to the next. I thought I was in the studio. So there's a new studio coming. New studio coming. When's that going to be? When Odin blesses us with his praise. Oh, so you have actually nothing in the works. (laughs) And you're lying on the spot? (laughs) Oh, interesting. Thanks, role model. The only thing you're rolling is down the fucking lane, you bowling ball. I don't care if people call me a bowl. You should. We have to wait. But you, it, it, no well. one's bringing back Odin. Imagine oh, if- wait, subject wait, change. wait. We have a subject change and a suspicion. <laughs> Watch this. Look at this lie, and then it's cut to suspicion, and then it's cut to subject change. Watch this. Us from oh, one okay. studio to the next. I studio. thought I was in the studio, so there's a new studio coming. Sorry, I keep backing this up. When's that gonna be? It's worth it. Watch. When Odin blesses us with his praise, we have to wait. But you, it, it, no well, one's bringing back Odin. Imagine if you wanted to, you, you know, bring what back I, Greek gods. You're like, let's just go back to the classics, guys. Thor, yeah. Athena. Yeah, come on. Wait, let me ask you a question if this is the spaceship. And ah! the- he yeah. ain't moving on to no Odin. What does that even mean? We should bring back Greek gods, bring them back I to bring what? Bring them back where? To and fix those aren't fictitious even Greek gods books? That he mentioned. Well, let's bring back Odin. To the what? dad from Thor. Yeah, let's bring out Iron Man. Why can't we have Iron also, Man as president? Also, Thor is on our lives literally fucking every day. He's yeah, back. Yeah, he's back, buddy. He's here. He never left. You ever turned on a show? It's Thor looking more and more casual every day. <laughs> he started out looking from me like he was in another planet. Now he looks like he's from the new girl. <laughs> so Tom Green ain't buying this Thor shit. And by the way, that Thor shit makes no sense. <laughs> hey, why don't we bring back Greek gods? I mean, it would make more sense if he said, why don't we bring back Greek dressing? That's even a topic. Like, yeah, what happened to Greek dressing? It used to be everywhere on every menu. (laughs) Uh, Why don't we bring back Greek gods? I don't know. I don't think they were ever here. Maybe in Greece once. (laughs) And then they realized it was a story. (laughs) And then Tom, that doesn't even phase Tom. Tom goes, back to the UFO. Watch this. Bring back Greek gods. You're like, let's just go back to the classics, guys. Thor, yeah. Athena. Athena. Yeah. Come on. Wait, let me ask you a question. Who else? Thor, Athena, who else? Let me ask you a question. Back to the UFO. Classics, guys. Thor, yeah. Athena. Yeah. Come on. Wait, yeah. Let me ask you a question. If this is the spaceship and the new yes. studio, is it going to be an uh, enclosed environment like this? I like, this is kind of really interesting to me. Do you like it better? Yes. Really? Oh, yeah. Tom Green thought about it, not to not offend Joe, but he thought about it like, what will get me more out of my questioning? You know, here's the thing about Tom Green. He's an interviewer. This is what he does. He studies the art of interviewing, and he actually, uh, like, thinks it's really special to interview somebody and to be able to get them to say things that we haven't heard. So Tom Green's been sitting at home like the rest of us, wanting to know, really, the real deal about this studio. So again, he's using interview skills to get more out of Joe. And if he says he doesn't like it, then Joe's... So he's pretending. Look at this. Let's hear this. Six guys. Thor. Yeah. Athena. Yeah. Come on. Wait, let me ask you a question. If this is a spaceship and the new yes. studio, is it going to be an uh, enclosed environment like this? I like, this is kind of really interesting to me. Do you like it better? Yes. Really? Now that I'm sitting here... I, before oh, I, oh, oh, you didn't like it before. See, covering his tracks. He knows he hated it before. He can't even lie to himself. He probably commented. And I says, yes, now that I'm sitting here, it's great. Why'd you build it, UFO boy? 
Why'd you build it? So, very nice. And he's drunk, and he's weird. He's the best. Yes. Really? Now that I'm sitting here, I before I might have said, you know, well, you could, you know, he's, he's Joe fucking Rogan. He could have as much space as he wants, but he could put himself in a big, mm. big, giant thing, coliseum kind of place with background, <laughs> d- deep, deep background. You could have like, but the thing is like, huh? no, because I always think about depth in yeah. photography. I think about wow. depth, but then when you, as far as the experience, when you're in an intimate conversation with one person for an hour, you're sitting there going, like, oh, we're going to talk to each other for an hour. It's kind of nice feeling like there's not people back far in the distance. You know, it's kind of, I think it creates an interesting environment. Like just acoustically, it's really cool. So he's trying to find the (laughs) two things that he could pull from it to get Joe to talk more. So acoustically, cool. And then I guess it is intimate. There you go. Yes. Two compliments that weren't technically a lie. Go ahead. Someone in the chat said something that I was thinking. Tom is doing a pry report. He has the same He's attitude prying. as our pry. Yes, CJ. our pry. <laughs> we were prying when we saw him. Now we're prying. We don't like him. Okay. Oh, oh wait. that's really, that's oh. what you think about the oh, studio? Oh, oh, that's, okay. why'd you start me? Uh, where do you get your meats? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just a fan. Where do you get the meats? I love it. And do you have a permit here? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just asking out of, because uh, I like you. All right, watch this. Acoustically, so it's nice. That's what I have to say about it, that. We are where there's less space, mm-hmm. which makes us somehow or another more intimate with the same amount of distance. So, is it going to be an enclosed space or is it going to be a larger room? It's going to be a. And a both would be good, by the way. Split for different. the difference. It's uh-huh. going to split the difference, I think, between this one and the old one, but just be more normal. I think less distracting. You know. This is awesome. Thank I, you. I mean, I like it too, but I don't know if it's necessarily perfect. It's just fun. Yeah, it's fun think... to be able to make. Look, I'm not a, a big designer, but it's fun to just do. You're different... not a big designer. You're not a big anything. First of all, don't make me hit the bomb sound effect for that one. And you're not a designer at all. Okay, so to say that is a jerk thing to say. You don't like the room. If it were up to you, you'd shoot it to the sky, and it'd blow up like a bottle rocket. Okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Boom shit it'd be fun to have a green screen behind me and be in space it would be fun to have a green screen behind me and be in space listen to this knuckle-headed idea that came out of nowhere as a lie it's necessarily perfect it's just listen fun. To this. It's fun to be able to make look i'm not a, a big designer but it's fun to just do different shit it'd be fun to have a green screen behind me and be mm-hmm. in space every day mm-hmm. like different galaxies floating behind me nope. like we could do a lot of shit so what is that that you think that it is that it is in people where we drive ourselves to kind of create this vision we have in our mind, you know? Like, you, it's, 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 it's like think ideas. you have a vision in your mind. Of, this is not even the end of the vision. This is, mm-hmm. this, is, this is the beginning of the new vision. Right. This is this is not even the studio. I thought it was in the studio. Spaceship. Enough. This is just a spaceship. Oh, he's just really making sure Joe's going with this. Again, just a spaceship. This is not. Just want to confirm here. Just want to confirm. Would you be okay if I just recorded you really quick saying that? (laughs) Thank you. Thanks. So, very weird. It seems like Tom Green ain't buying it. Let's hear some more. This is the first time anyone's hearing this. Because it's the first time I've ever said it. Wow. Because it's the first time I thought of it. (laughs) Oh, the truth comes out. So that was all a lie. Did not expect to be pried into. Yeah, and I also didn't expect him to tell the truth, but he knew he had to. So, but imagine only Tom Green has negged him this long for him to admit it. He goes, well, it's the first time I thought of it. And he's telling the truth here only because Tom Green literally asked him seven times. (laughs) Are you sure this is the spaceship? Well, I kind of just thought of it. Okay, so you did lie to me for the last six minutes. Thank you. So this isn't wasn't a plan. Good. And I'm very particular because I'm Tom Green, so now I'm awfully mad. This is the next studio that, yeah. that's taking us to the next studio. Yeah, there yeah. is going to be another studio. Oh, there is, yeah. This is really is a spaceship. Uh-huh. Like, if you could look at it, about, that would be a metaphor, right? Is that a metaphor, technically? Just- now, and... Uh, Listen, we, I won't, I'm not going to ask any more questions about the new studio because I want to 
Well, it's I just different shit, man. I, I want to do surprised. I want to do a bunch of different things, but I do want to do some uh, where it's a room that's a hundred percent green screen, mm-hmm. and I want to figure out like okay, what... he wants a room that's a hundred percent green screen. This is bad, Wait bad, till bad. You hear this one? If you thought a red tube was bad, a room that's a green screen is the worst possible podcast scenario. I've been in them. I was on the set of the Anthony Cumia show. Sitting in Anthony's seat. No, Anthony's never sat in my seat. None of my fools sit in my seat, believe it or not. I sit in their seats, and uh, I was in a bright green, all green room. I'll tell you this, not very relaxing, not very fucking chill. It feels like being slimed, basically. You ever been on Nickelodeon's Double Dare, and they drop the bucket of slime over your head? It's kind of how it felt like. Not a good place for an intimate convo. But Joe Rogan thinks that Anthony Cumia's studio is cool, right? So he's going to say, oh, I'm going to do a whole green screen. That'll solve this problem. Uh, where it's a room that's 100% green screen. Listen. Mm-hmm. And I want to figure out like what we have to do to be in space. I want to do a conversation in space. Yeah. So one of the rooms I want to do. He thinks Tom Green, this will like appease Tom Green's like creative side. And Tom Green's like, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> you thought I'd be into that? Like you're trying to like placate me and pander to me to get me off your back? It's disgusting. You're not doing it in Joe Rogan in space, floating in space. Please. You've never done anything goofy. Brian Redband once put fake snowflakes on the show. Joe was furious. <laughs> back in the day, they had this program and it started snowing. He goes, turn that shit off, Brian. Turn that shit off. So you don't want to do a green screen special effects show where Joe's in a full green suit with like dots all over him. Hanging on wires and they're mapping him out and he's doing Lord of the Rings. So, uh, yeah, like cut the shit and Tom Green's like, that's not even something I'm into. So it's like a bad idea. Do I want to do like a full wait, 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 circular sorry, sorry, green screen? Look at this. Wait, 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 wait. So, can you start that again? Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, you can. Look at it. <sighs> Fuck! There's not enough protein in those shakes to keep this body going. This is harder than kettlebell swings on an elliptical in a cryo tank under the ocean. All right, so uh, Tom <laughs> thinks this idea is crazy because it's so not Rogan to even do this. And Tom goes, is he just like trying to like come up with bullshit on the spot? Is this like a lie as you go? So... Uh, he challenges him. I love this. One of the rooms I want to do, I want to do... This is like great. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, circular sorry, sorry, green screen. Look at, no, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Look at this. So, can you start that again? Yeah. 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 You oh, want to do, room, uh, do an interview room. in space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs> you want to do an interview in space? Nah. <laughs> Even Kanye West's son knows that's a bad nah. I ain't going to no space. Do it on the ground. Kanye West knew his son. All right, let's see uh, what happens here. Do a room uh-huh. where, say, like you and I, Tom Green, Joe Rogan, yeah. sitting at a bar table, yeah. right, circular bar table. Oh, you want to have like you oh, and I would chair, just hanging, talking to oh, each other. Oh, okay. Just two microphones and bar, uh-huh. like very intimate. Behind us, all green screen right. in space. Okay. So when you see the podcast, it's just mm-hmm. us in space. So that's what I, I love. That is that really what we're, where it's going? The problem would be. Ooh, you wouldn't see that it's in space. You would just see green, yeah. right? Yeah, as would that be to... weird? We can do that. Well, what I'm saying... Yeah, we can do that, right? I think I told you about... Yes, you can do anything you want, camera-wise and looks-wise. That's what you should have done in the first place. Can we do That's a green? That's what we've been trying can to tell Can we do you. a green screen? We only have $100 million to spend. Can we paint a wall green and key it out with any program? I think so. I think we could. You couldn't, actually. You could barely film with digital cameras, okay? Maybe you can't green screen. Can we do that? Can we do that, Jamie? You're this dumb? You don't know? You could actually do the same green screen they used for Avengers. You could do that one, too. Probably. With your money. So, yes. You could do what you're saying. Just yeah. say it's not green screen. No, 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 no. no. What would it be? It's actually there. No, I think I just, I think I thought it's of like it. like projected around you. I think I, thought, oh. I, I think I thought of an idea. Joe yeah. Rogan fake like reacting to what he's saying because he's so nervously out of it, you know? Joe Rogan, don't uh, don't get it. He is stuck in the mud. 
Okay? Like a car in the jungle. He is stuck in the mud. And all he's thinking about is how awkward all this feels. You've been in, in this situation right? where you're talking to somebody and you're like, this is not connecting. Just keep powering through it. But you can't even, like, focus on getting it back on track. It's just too nerve-wracking. Better? Yeah. Yeah, it's better? Look at him. It's cheaper, but it's better. Oh. Okay. Just paint this room green. <laughs> there you go. Tom Green wraps it up. Just paint the room green, you fucking idiot. Even I know that. Then you could be in space. You could do just, that. Just spray paint this room green. Yeah, you could do that. So you could have it like green so you can do that, but also you have the intimacy of the clothes. Like Anthony Cumia from uh, Opie and Anthony, his whole thing is green screen, right? He does like green You didn't go with me? Okay. Do I have to go through this whole Cumia green screen experience again? I mean, I feel like I've done this 70 times. He's talked about this 70 times. Even a new listener of Joe Rogan, I go, hey, uh, you could ask like Alexis Wren. Who listens to Joe Rogan a model and be like, hey, uh, if, if you could name one thing that you learned from Joe Rogan's show this month, what would it be? Um, that Anthony Cumia had a green screen studio that Joe likes? But is he seriously trying to say that that's something to look up to? Has he ever said that before? I that think specifically he's just trying. I think he Cumia's show is amazing. Yeah, oh, all the that's time. Insane. He says that all the time. Really? Oh my God! Yes, I mean, you've he been says here Cumia for it. Is his inspiration? No, he thinks Kumi is sat here. You're gonna hear it here. Fuck, man. He has a, a setup where if you go to his channel, go to go to see if there's a clip of him. Like it no, looks we just like watched he's, it. Uh, it looks like Sega CD. Remember, I zoomed in and said Anthony in theaters. Never. It's too scary. Remember he that whole. That that's as good as it gets. Yeah. That's his goal. Where well, he's at now is just in a spaceship to a studio that looks like Kumia's studio. Yes. Is what we're hearing. Yes. <laughs> that's cool. Like in front of a window that overlooks yeah. like this spectacular. Yeah. It's just, it's just a green screen. Wow. Yeah, it's indoors. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, Anthony? How's it going? Those guys wow. from Opie and Anthony Opie went, and, Anthony. And, and Jim Norton, when those guys always... would have you on the podcast or, yeah. uh, or the radio show, rather. Mm -hmm. I say podcast because it really was the first okay, podcast. I, I don't he just hear. said, it looks like they're at the top of a building, but they're indoors. Yeah, this is how like, shitty and dumb Joe is now. You must stop. I just can't believe it. I know. Okay, All right, what's so our next quote? At this quote? point, Joe is freaking pissed at Tom. Yeah, and you can tell. <laughs> so we're going to go to 311.10. Wow, one of my favorite bands, 311.10. They were a 311 <laughs> cover band. <laughs> Right after the lead singer of 311 was murdered, they came out with a band called 31110. All right, so what happens here? Do we need to know? They're still fighting. Joe is going to act like an asshole. All right, surprise, let's see this. Surprise. Joe's going to act like an A. Sounds like you're asking for ecstasy. If I was a cop, I'd want to arrest you right now. Nope. I'm like, this motherfucker is asking nope. for people to give him ecstasy. Nope. I am not. Say, do you got any? <laughs> <laughs> Drug talk. I know people who have it. Yeah, no, I'm not asking for it. No, I'm not. It's a tricky drug. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to be happy for no reason. <laughs> but but it is true that I've never done it, by the way. That's true. I think uh, I heard that. Yeah. That's what I heard. You got any? I heard you never did it. No, no. What? But I... I uh, it's still coming. I can imagine it would be probably a lot of fun, though. I could imagine it would be. It's supposed to be uh, very therapeutic for soldiers. Yeah. Like sur soldiers returning with PTSD, apparently MDMA is... Oh, uh, yeah, just send them to the rave, give them a couple tabs of X, and it'll be therapeutic for them. Make sure they have their rifle with the safety off while they're at the rave. Very, very good for them and Idiot. overcoming. He's talking about MDMA. Ecstasy is a mix of speed and MDMA-like substances that is pressed into a pill and sold at raves. It is not used for therapeutic purposes ever. <laughs> talking about the molecule MDMA. It has similar effects to ecstasy, completely different. So he's just told 30 million people that if you want to get over PTSD, use ecstasy. It's insane. <laughs> All right, here. Some of the situations they experienced. Can I say something about the Canadian here go, military? Here, go. here you go. Okay, you're going to put your... Can I say something about what he says? The Canadian military. The Canadian military. Tom Green is from Canada, right? He just wants to tell a nice story. Blame Canada. Remember that? It's from a show. So, Tom Green, Joe hates Canada because Joe is Mr. American Longhorn Foghorn Texas now, and he thinks he's Mr. America. Dude, you're from gay-ass Boston... You lived in L.A. after that, and you've been in Texas for three weeks, okay? Slow down, cowboy. 
So let's hear what he has to say about Canada, where actually Alberta, Canada is more cowboy than Joe's ever lived. It's more Texan than Joe. And so Austin, by the way, is Texas's Can I say something? girl city. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's like, uh, you ever go to a barbecue restaurant and everything, they've got, uh, pulled pork, they've got ribs, they've got uh, brisket. And then for the women, they have a salad, a chicken salad, a Caesar. And, uh, that's on the menu because sometimes you have to come with a woman. Austin is similar to the salad at a barbecue restaurant. It's the woman's city in Texas. Or... or the beta city? Drew Michael. Oh, Drew Michael does get the salad at uh, Smoke Barbecue. <laughs> you could get like... I've heard tell you're like, of this. We've smoked this brisket for 22 hours. It's one of the top rated briskets of the country. Would you like that? Um, I think I'll take the kids' side salad with... Um, do you have store-bought craft Ranch? And you're like, true, we're at a really good restaurant. But the salad, I want the salad. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's what Austin is. It ain't fucking rodeo, okay? Sorry, people from Austin. They don't even have the stampede. Austin is basically Portland, stuck in Texas. Austin is basically Seattle, stuck. I, th I mean, I've never been there. Who am I to judge? Yep. Sur soldiers returning. Here we go. PTSD it's going to be mean about Canada, MDMA right? Is, uh, very, very good for Cheers. them and overcoming some of the situations they experienced. Can I say something about the Canadian military? Uh -oh. Okay, you're going to put your hat on? Oh, you okay. Move the hat. You're getting excited. You don't oh. have to put it on. Just... Oh. So, check this out, Joe. Watch him Whoa. here. Oh, this is all little mean micros. Oh, this is nothing. This is nothing compared, compared to, what's, to coming? what's coming. Oh, good. Jules has seen this six times. She's been laughing like a hyena all morning. I go, oh, what's going on? I go, no, don't tell me. Save it. We'll save it for the show. So I can't wait to see what happens here. Think about the Cheers. Canadian military. To Red Bar. Okay, you're going to put your hat on? You got to okay. move the hat. You're getting excited. You don't have to put it on. So check this out, Joe. These Canadian boots. Military. I made for walking. Can I show you this? Yes. Okay. Look at this. Is that okay? Yeah. Check this out. So Tom Green's a little drinker, bro. So he's getting drunk. Joe has no time for Tom Foolery. Look at that. No time for Tom Green Foolery. Look at little bolder, fat ass Dante Nero over here with his fake ass, whack ass paper maquillage sculpture in his cardboard red room where you can see the seams. You know, what happens if you knock three times? Do the seams open to hell? And then Tom Green's putting his foot on the new desk. Hey, Joe, check out these boots I got. Now, Joe isn't one for off-the-cuff surprise. He don't like when somebody changes the subject on him. Neither would I, but I wouldn't let someone change the subject on me in this manner. Because I'd treat Tom Green with some respect. Watch this. I made for walking. Can I show you this? Yes. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Check this out. See these boots? I don't think Jamie can see them, though. Can you see them? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where's your... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, check that out. Yeah, it's okay. a boot. Seriously, can you get a shot of that? Yeah. This is going to be cool. Look at you. Check this out. Check this out. These are uh, Canadian Army boots. Okay? Mm hmm He's fuming. <laughs> He's literally biting his lip to get through this. Um, He uh is seething. Is that the right word for this? Yeah, is this what see seething is? I would is? call this seething. This is what Gavin does. Just see when the SPLC puts him on another report. So, uh, and Tom Green, I think, knows and he wants to see will Joe explode? Let's find out. <laughs> Let's find out. I wore these, um, you know, Joe. I got them when I went to Afghanistan. Ooh, Joe's eyeing Jamie and then looking at the clock and, and did a yeah, I went and did a, a, a tour with the Canadian Army. Dad, my dad was in Canadian Army. My dad, Canadian Army. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, check it out, man. Like, these what? are good boots. What? I'll tell you right now. Are I'm you a... telling me about your boots? Is this yeah. what we've come to? Canadian Maybe Army boots. Maybe we should wrap boots. this up. Ooh. No, no, no. Oh, look at how hurt And they got he an is. hour left here. Look how hurt he is. No. Tom's like, I think Joel liked these boots because... And maybe Tom's being sincere. Maybe Tom's like... 
Joe will like these boots because he's like a country guy. Uh, he likes hunting and like outdoorsman stuff. Maybe he'll like the boots. Well, he Maybe forced he him to talk about hunting for yeah. six hours. COVID and hunting. And did you know that the dog came from a wolf? And I can't just, I just can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, you came from an ape. That's crazier. We came from a fish, I heard once. So, yeah, I can believe a dog came from a wolf nearly identical till this day. Okay? But you know what's never been discussed? Canadian boots. boots. At least it's a new At topic. least it's a new topic, you wolf. You deer, you coyote, man. You know how many times I've heard the same rhetoric out of Joe's mouth? Like, every day it's the same three subjects. You know, so let's see how they handle this. These two guys, and and, and uh, you know, check it out, man. Like these are good boots. I'll tell you right now. Are I've you been... telling me about your boots? Is this yeah. what we've come to? Canadian Maybe army boots. Maybe we should wrap boots. this up. Yeah, they're boots, yeah. right? Can can what do they have? Like rubber, leather, a lot of shit like that. Yeah. They're, now they're... you talk about toe shoes to no end. Those are lamer than these boots. These are cool boots. You probably would like them. He's talking about something cool. He's talking about something. Outdoorsy, but tactical. he's already mad at yes. Tom about the studio stuff, so yes. he's not going to let him have anything now. And look how oily he is. He's f covered in chapstick. Somebody told him chapstick was a good way to reduce shine on camera, and he just started <laughs> rubbing it all over his head. Look at this guy. Looks like something from Dick Tracy. All right, let's uh, see what he does next. <laughs> comfortable. Laces. Though. Really comfortable. Yeah. Listen to Joe. <laughs> Okay. Right. Oh! oh! Someone's catching on. Get me Jamie's got a gun karaoke just really quick. I won't do the whole song. I'll just do the beginning. And this is called Someone's Catching On by Tom Green. Let's see this tape again. About your boots? Is this yeah. what we've Most come to? Canadian Maybe Army Boots. Maybe we should wrap boots. this up. Yeah, they're boots, yeah. right? Can can what do they have? Like rubber, leather, a lot of shit like that? Yeah, they're, they're comfortable. Laces? Though. Really comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> you're right. It probably is a good time to run. It, it probably when is. you're showing off your boots. Can I have another pub of that? Yeah, sure. Fuck. And someone's catching on, huh? Someone's catching on, indeed. You are. Someone's catching on. Could that person be Thomas? Could he be catching up? Let's find out. Just a few seconds here. Could Todd be catching up? Someone's catching on. Someone's catching on. He thought this interview could be fun. And now it's like he's under a gun. What will Joe Rogan ask? Is it me or is he being an ass? He thought this interview would be fun, but Joe's talking to him like a jerk. He thought he'd like his boots, or maybe a story about his bed. But no! Someone's catching. It's Tom. Someone's catching on. Don't you see? He thought this interview would be fun. But now he wants to get in his van and run. Come on, Joe. So much. Uh, someone is catching on, definitely, here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Someone is catching on. And it is Tom Green. And he got bit by the man. It's insane. Yeah. Oh, they say the spell that he was under... It's just like lightning and thunder. Okay, cut that shit. Let's go back to the interview they're fighting. Do we go to another time code here? 35110. Wow. 351. Almost four hours in. They've been drinking, smoking, treating each other like fucking spit. And now they are fully fighting. Three what? 35110. 35110. All right. They're fully fighting here. Now, in this one, Joe Ooh. starts to talk about one of his favorite topics, and let's see what happens. Yeah, one of Joe's favorite talks. Could it be coyotes, eggs, COVID? You'll see. The 
Gavin Newsom <laughs> in a weird way. Okay. Where they can see literally happens. see almost behind them. Okay. So like if you're if you're if this is like an antelope, it's looking here and you're over here, they see you crystal clear. Okay. Crystal clear. They just yeah. don't see you back here. Right, right, but right. But right here, they see you 100%. They see you 100% here. They see in a full range that we can't even comprehend because their really? eyeballs are out here. They don't even look like they belong here. What is she talking about? They look about? like an avatar. Are... Antelope? Yes. That reminds me of a song. Oh, home on the range where the elk and the antelope play. So Joe said the word antelope, and he's talking about it. Tom Green is three sheets to the van. <laughs> and uh, so Tom Green starts getting loose. Get he's having fun. Boots. Tom Green's having fun, and he does this. 100%. They see you 100% here. They see in a full range that we can't even comprehend because their eyeballs are out here. They don't even look like they belong here. How they look like an avatar why are, why Pull up are... a picture of a pronghorn antelope's face. Antelope. Like, look at his face. There's really there there's some there's some cool close up ones that show how bizarre their eyes bizarre. are like that one up the the one in the upper left hand home, corner click on that home get close to that the range. look at his eyes See now if I know a thing about two about Joe when he's talking animal he don't want to be interrupted with some goofy ass singing okay so Joe is talking about these animals and out of nowhere. Tom says in the upper left hand home, corner. Click on that. Home Get close to that. The range. Look at his eyes. See how wide his eyes are behind his head? Where the deer and the antelope play. Fascinating animal. And that animal exists oh, because give me a home. Oh, <laughs> when you see it. Hold on, because I Everybody wanted to get is. into Jason. Here's Jason. A lot of my fools look like Jason. Uh, watch this. So Tom's singing. Joe's trying to explain some dumbass, misinterpreted fact no about antelopes. No one gives a shit. We don't live anywhere near a barn, bro. We're all in cities if we listen to you. Listen to this. Wide his eyes are behind his head. Where the deer and the antelope play. Fascinating <laughs> animal. And that animal exists oh, because... Oh, give me a home. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's so hard to do, but trust me. Oh, fuck. Tony motherfucking Hinge Cliff. Wow. <laughs> he is fucking fed up, bro. <laughs> You're going to keep singing or do I need to do jujitsu to you? <laughs> oh, my God. He's furious. He is let, if you ever see Rogan go, oh, I'm on the range when he asks you a question. He does not like being ranged, <laughs> which is a new form of trolling. Dude, that guy got ranged. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, he's talking about antelopes, and then I sang home on the range to him to an uh, to a level where he just he was gonna snap. Watch. Low play. Fascinating animal, and that animal exists oh, because. Oh, give me a home. Oh, there was a thing called a where North the American cheetah. Oh, <laughs> going in for the full song, huh, Green? This is a full battle. Imagine staring Joe in the eye and going, so give me a home where the buffalo roam. What are you going to do? I'm Tom Green. I'm sensitive. Be careful. It's really something else. And Joe knows, don't snap. Don't fucking snap. Everyone, because, you know, he's hanging on by a thread by a lot he's of people. He's clenching his fist. Joe is so hard. Yeah. Yes. Joe is so mad. And the skies oh. are not cloudy all, all day. day. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my God. I got to see how that ends. The skies are not cloudy all day. Oh, that's the face of a guy like <laughs> who wants to beat you up. <laughs> You're going to keep singing. <laughs> that's what he wants to say. He used to beat people up like this. He calls them. He's going to leap over the table and grab him by the throat. Look at this guy. And what's so funny is Joe Rogan has put himself into a position where he can't use his jujitsu on anyone ever. It would ruin him. Even if it's, you know, he could get sued. So um, it's so great. You could like terrorize Joe now. And he's put himself into such a category where he can't do anything. Like if he snapped on Tom Green, no matter how hard Tom poked him, It'd be Joe's fault on Twitter. Of course. It'd be Joe's fault everywhere. So 
Joe put himself in the worst. I would never let myself get in this. This is what happens when you want 100 million Benjamin Franklins. <laughs> when your greed knows no bounds, now you're fucked. You're a rat in a cage, Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Antelope. Oh, that's Ooh. beautiful. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Antelope. <laughs> yeah. Antelope. Antelope. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Oh, look at Tom. <laughs> you think you're fucking cool or something? Or you think you're better than me? All day. Yeah. <laughs> Antelope. Ooh, I'm doing Pink Trip's job for him. He's going to hate me. Zoomins. At least I don't go red. I mean, don't At least really, I don't turn it red. You don't need to make an edit. I don't it's need. I'm here. not making an edit. This is all here. Antelopes. Oh, yeah? I hope one of these antelopes fucking rips you one day. You <laughs> fucking asshole. Stop killing the deer. <laughs> Leave them alone. You have enough meat. I don't even care. I mean, I like, I'll waste a steak if it's slightly too salty. You know, I don't even give a fuck. But um, stop killing these animals. You sick person. You're like Jeffrey Dahmer, but with bigger animals. You know, people hated Jeffrey Dahmer because he killed a uh, hamster once. You're killing magnificent horn like Santa's helpers. You're an animal. All right, let's see what he does. Is there any more here? Or are we... Um, I, can't, I forget. Let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, oh. I, I, oh. I, 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 you know, it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh... Oh. Here's a good question for you, Tom Green. Okay, yes, sir. Oh. We don't want animals to go extinct, right? Yeah, right. We that's... don't. No one does. But they not. do. And most of them have gone extinct. Like we don't want anything to be extinct for sure because of humans. But animals have been ex going extinct since. Don't think about it too hard. The animals are going to start laughing at you. Jeez. You need to chill the hell out and stop podcasting. It ain't for you. Okay, now you can go to 40320. Oh my God, I can't believe it. 403. And this is how you know. I don't know why he's not wrapping code. up these shows. He's like. You know, Joe Rogan knows these shows go so bad, so he keeps them going long in hopes that they'll auto-correct themselves and they'll end happily. They never do. It just makes it worse. You know? And uh, he doesn't know. It's interesting. He's been doing this show for a while. He doesn't know how to get himself out of the bad and back into the good and, and make it all happy. He just thinks, if I just keep going, certainly we'll land on a happy ending. Uh-uh, it's not going to happen. Now you're going five hours into these episodes because you're so angry? That's a terrible idea. 40320? Here we are. Let's see what happens here. This island. We went to this island. Okay. And I remember... Okay, so... We shaking hands? Yeah. How drunk are you, bro? Very oh. drunk. Oh! Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm great. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So Tom Green does this weird movie. He's like, are we friends? Tell me, because Tom Green's like, dude, you're acting so mean to me. The and Tom Green, like, is probably hey, crazy. he's a worrying, paranoid, drunk, weirdo guy. So he's like, are we friends? Are we friends? And Joe's like, we're shaking hands now, you fucking drunk idiot. And it's like, Joe, you're worse. You forced him into you this. You forced him, and you know he's a sensitive guy. So yeah, he's concerned. Like, are we cool? Like, he's drunk, he's high. You're being so mean to him. Jamie's like, you and. Jamie are making these faces. Glancing at each Glancing. other. So he's like, are we cool? And he's drunk and he's bad at being drunk, you know? Not something I would do, but it's definitely something he would do. It makes sense. And I remember, okay, so. <laughs> We're shaking hands? Yeah. How drunk are you, bro? Very drunk. All right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm great. Ooh, I'm... the look down and fake smile. What an ass. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Cheers. I'm great. I'm good. I'm not. I, I'm not. Oh, I'm... wait. See that face Joe made? Oh. <laughs> you ever cheer someone and they look back at you like this? Run! <laughs> I mean, come the fuck on. Imagine that. Cheers. That's like we're two evil princes. Or like, <laughs> I'll trust you as far as I could see you. So this is really bad, man. It's like you don't cheer somebody and they give you a look like this. Yikes. Um, but I'll cheers to that. Let's have a drink with them. You know, we never drink with, uh, we never get to drink with Rogan. By the way, Rogan, his booze is all fake. You know that? He's been putting in uh, stuff there. Here. <laughs> Let's toast with them. Here. Cheers, Joe. 
I'm not. I, I'm in control. Everything. I understand. Fine. Yeah. I, well, let's I'm cheers again. I'm good. I'm, good. I'm, I'm not very drunk. I'm, cheers. I'm, I'm great drunk. I'm great drunk. You're a good man. This is like Tom one Green. of the all-time good times ever. Whoa! I, listen, I, you know I love you. Like when you put it down, like oh. like in a book, you go like, "What was the best time ever? This was the best time." Ah, yeah. let's give it like top twenty. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> but then he'll feel guilty and he'll be like, "I love you. You're an inspiration." And you're gonna see this coming up. Really sick, disgusting, twisted ending. And again, this is why everyone shouldn't have a podcast and everyone shouldn't be podcasting every five seconds of the day. It's not supposed to happen. Joe's talked out. He's been talked out for the last year. He's talked out. The conversation doesn't stimulate. It doesn't matter what celebrity's there. It's an annoyance now. It's an annoyance sitting four hours listening to this crap. And uh, this is the mighty end of this experience. Hey, it was just an experience, right? And experiences don't last forever. The Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> and someone in the chat just mentioned that Joe is going to be Spotify exclusive on December 2nd. That's in like a couple of weeks. I don't know if we're going to be watching Might as well it. get the bulldozer out because let's fill this grave quickly. Who's going to be watching it on Spotify? I could barely watch music on I mean, I Really, I don't like Spotify. Unless I'm listening to music in the car or here on the show or in bed or anywhere else. But I ain't listening to videos on Spotify. So not Rogan. It's not good enough. Now, Red Bar, you go, Mike, Red Bar's hard to listen. Yeah, it's so good. You'd go out of your way to listen to it. It's exactly. a must watch. Joe Rogan's show is only for money. You're really going to go out of your way to listen to that show when you know it's just meanness. Elk. He's meaner than me now. Some would say I'm mean. No. Not around here. Not like this. Look at a fake chair. Top 20. And he feels, you know, again, I think he mistreats Tom Green and then feels guilty about it. And he tries to make up for it. Absolutely. We don't have to make it the best. No, Put so much time. pressure on ourselves. Good time. Good time. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> good times. Good times. Yeah. And you know, the second Tom Green left the studio, this is what he did. Oh! Vomiting. Nervous <laughs> vomiting. Yes, Tim Dillon Tim did Dillon. a sketch of Tom walking out of the yeah. studio and doubling. There needs to be a scene five seconds after Tom walks out of the studio. And then it's just him by his car vomiting. <laughs> and Joe doesn't even know he's putting people through this. Look at this guy. You're going to wreck... He might kill himself after this. Really? Joe could kill one of these guys. So, what's the goal for the end of this walkabout? This um, motor vehicle okay, powered walkabout? Okay, you can skip to... Oh, God, look at his face. Okay, yeah, what do we got? 411.00. 411, another 311 cover band. Here. Sure. A month. You can do whatever the fuck you want, Tom Green. Yeah. You just have to decide that's what you're doing. I can do a thousand push-ups. I month. bet you could. I can. But that's the key. <laughs> the key is for sure you could. That's not that uh, much. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if I could this month, but maybe next month. Maybe well, a thousand. <laughs> that's, you know, a hundred a day for ten days. That's not that bad. Uh, okay, next maybe next month. You could do a thousand pretty easy. Uh -huh. That's what they're talking you know, about push-ups. You could do a thousand push-ups easily. This is a weird thing. They're getting into a push-up thing here. <laughs> Well, it started, I forget what they were talking about, but he was like, you can do anything you want. You don't yeah. have to read the comments. Don't listen to people. You can do whatever you want. And Tom said. He brought up the push-up thing. Joe did. Yes. Really? Bring up this push-up thing. A thousand push-ups in one sitting is tough. <laughs> yeah, go to, four. yeah, he brings it up, I swear. Let's hear this. This month, but maybe next month. Maybe well, a thousand, <laughs> that's, you know, a hundred a day for 10 days. That's not that bad. Uh, okay, next, maybe next month. You could do a thousand pretty easy. Uh -huh. You I know, could probably do 10 push ups. Well, you, you got to do what, 33 a day? 33 I a day? Probably... If someone's never worked out before, they can't do 33 push ups a day for a month. You just can't. <laughs> you're going to be dead sore. That you're not going to get to 33 on the first day, by the way. You're going to get to seven, and then you're going to be dead sore the next day and unable to do any push ups. And then you might be sore for in the next five days. Joe Rogan only thinks in terms of himself. And this proves it. Oh, you could do a thousand push-ups in a month. You could if you work your way up to them. How do you not know this? You're the leader of on it. Anyone, if you haven't worked out, it doesn't matter how strong you are, you can't do a thousand push-ups in a month if you've never worked out like Tom Green. Sorry. 
and he's going to prove it here by doing push-ups. <laughs> yes, you could work up to it rather fast. I would say after a month of doing five to 10 to 20 push-ups every four or five days, you could work your way up to this very easily. But uh, no, you just can't jump in there, Joe. Not everybody is you and Aubrey with the sex pump dick thing that you came up with. It's not that bad. Uh, okay, next, maybe next month. You could do a thousand pretty easy. Uh -huh. You I know, could probably do ten push-ups. Well, you you got to do what? Thirty three a day? Thirty three a day is a thousand in a month? Thirty three. One thousand in one sitting is tough. Don't mock me. You can't do a thousand push-ups. No one here can do a thousand in a row. <laughs> Except Joe, but that's because he's very small. Okay, it's like how they say an ant can take on like uh, 7,000 times their weight. Joe can do a million push-ups. He weighs one to two ounces. Here. 33 push-ups a day. Can I do push-ups right now? Sure, you could. But Look why would we do that? I mean, how drunk are you that we're really going to bring pretty ourselves drunk. to that? I'm pretty drunk. Ooh. <laughs> so this isn't what a host of this level does. So what's going on right now is Tom Green goes, should I do push-ups right now? And Joe goes, no, why would we do that? Would he drunk? <laughs> Here's how it would happen on Jay Leno. Should I do push-ups right now? And Jay Leno would go, oh, I don't know. What do you think, guys? You want to see him do ah, ah, and I'd be like, And then he gets down and do push-ups and ah, ha, ha. And it's funny. Here's Joe Rogan. Why would you do push-ups? What are you, drunk? <laughs> Joe, I don't know. Maybe you shouldn't be interviewing people then. <laughs> how about, hey, Tom Green's going to do push-ups. Let's see. But look at his face. You're Four and a half hours in. End the show if it's not to your liking. Ball. Plus, this podcast is like eight hours old, right? How many hours is it, Jamie? Four Look at this. Plus, this podcast is like eight hours old. How long? Then wrap it up. Why isn't Joe wrapping it up? Well, what did I tell you? He can't wrap it up on a sour note. It feels bad. To end the show on a bad note, I've done this before. We you end all the know this. Well, you don't know it, but I used to, uh, before I was a professional, you end the show on a bad note, e it carries with you all day. You feel guilty. So what you'd want to do, I haven't done this in years, by the way, <laughs> is you want to end the show always on a positive. And you want the whole show to be a positive note. And if you're going into a funk on one of these four-hour shows, you got to veer it to a positive note. Because if you leave on a sour note, you'll never forgive yourself. So Joe is trying to go. You know he doesn't go four and a half hours, especially when he's not having fun. And even back in the day when he wasn't having fun, he'd still wrap it up and get the fuck out of there. This is a weakness. This is showing that he is uh, no longer in control. Uh, four and a half hours, four hours and 36 minutes, and they never reach a happy conclusion. I can. That's the key. <laughs> the key is for sure you could. That's not that uh, much. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if I could. This month, but maybe next month. Let's just, well, a thousand, <laughs> that's, you know, a hundred a day for ten days. That's not that bad. Uh, okay, next, maybe next month. You could do a thousand pretty easy. Uh -huh. You I know, could probably do ten push-ups. Well, you you got to do what? Thirty-three a day? Thirty-three a day is a thousand in a month? Thirty-three, thirty-three push-ups a day. Can I do push-ups right now? Sure, you there could. But why would we do that? I mean, how drunk? I are don't you know. Maybe because what should we do? Talk about coyote again? Let him do the push-up. We're really gonna. Bring ourselves to that. I'm pretty drunk. Plus, this podcast is like eight hours old, right? Yeah. <laughs> How many hours is it, Jamie? 4.15. Four fifteen. It'd be funny. It'd be funny to do something. It's gone along. It'd be, It'd be funny. funny. To do push-ups? Oh, no. God forbid you do something funny as a comedy show. You want to be in the comedy category? No, no, no. Let's talk about COVID. Let's talk about Gavin Newsom for hours on end. God forbid we do something that makes people laugh on our comedy show. What are we, Mark Marin? You know, can a comedy show do comedy for once, or are they just going to argue today's politics? It'd be funny at this point. I, I don't think it would be. Okay. All right. Oh, gonna... you don't think it would be. You know comedy. Joe, don't know nothing. I don't think you know, it would be. For such a comedian, he really is. I look at Joe as more like, uh, I feel like my accountant is more of a comical guy than Rogan. Yes. Rogan is not comedy. Our lawyer understands comedy Our lawyer more. understands comedy more. He loves H3. We tell which, him all about these comedians yeah. and all the things they're Joe doing Joe Rogan to us ain't legally. no comedian. He, he goes, is. Ha, ha, ha. Joe Rogan spent six years crafting a thing that makes you laugh. He's not a comedian. He's not funny. He's never been funny. It's time. Joe, it's over. Here you go. All right. I'm just I won't do it. Cheers. Um, 
so that's what I, how do we get to that about push-ups and i'm just getting up in the morning where did, where did that come from end it so check it out i'm gonna do some okay oh mm -hmm. look at this tom he green knows. goes he knows he i'm gonna do, to do some because, because you know what we need some kind of finale i'm not gonna just leave the show on this level so he goes fuck it i'm doing the push-ups watch let's end this close it close it down Whoa. Jamie. oh do you hear this so he goes no nah, i'm gonna do the push-ups and joe goes jamie end it end it let's end this and Jamie doesn't end it, so now Joe's stuck with the push-up thing. Watch this. <laughs> drunk you, we're really this is crazy. Bring pretty ourselves drunk. to that. I'm pretty drunk. Plus, this podcast is like eight hours old, right? Yeah. <laughs> How many hours is it, Jamie? 4.15. Four It'd be funny. It'd be funny to do something. It's gone along. It'd be funny to, to, to do, do push-ups? It'd, It'd be funny at this point. I, I don't think it would be. Okay, all right. But I understand. All right. I, understand I won't do it. Coming from. Cheers. Ooh. Um, you see that face? So that's what I, we, how do we get to that? Here it comes. About push-ups and... I'm just, I don't know. Why don't you stay on track and figure it out, Baldy? How do we get to that? Who are you asking? Jamie, who can't even operate the switcher, which is one button to the left and one to the right? You got two buttons to operate. This is Jamie's job. Doink. 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 Oh, I'm, it's too hard. Who are you asking? In the morning. Where did, where did that come Watch from? Watch this. So check it out. I'm gonna do something, okay? Here it comes. Yeah. Watch. Let's end this. Close it. Close it down, Jamie. He's gonna do something. He's gonna no. regret. No, no you no, can no. if you want. I'm, I'm just kill, joking. You How many kids? Oh, I'm just kill. I'm just joking. I'm just kill. I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, why did you say the word kill in between? You hear that? A little slip. He's gonna no. do something. He's gonna no. regret. No, no, no you no, can no. if you want. I'm, I'm just kill, joking. You How want many kids? Yeah, yeah. Let me do something. Okay. Come on. Oh, what are you do? did you see that face? <laughs> oh, that is that's it. Want to do push-ups? Wow. <laughs> this is not the same guy. That looks this like is the not... meme where like the lady is on one side being like, you cook my dinner. And then there's like that yeah. shriveled up meme guy on the other side being like, mm, yes, honey. Yes. <laughs> uh, He's doing that exact face. This is not leadership. This is not role model. This is not inspirational. <laughs> this is... Bitches! There won't be a camera on you though. Here. How many push ups are you going to try to do? Don't do don't 10. hurt yourself. Let's see if I can do 10. Okay. That's Whoa. reasonable. He touched I like him. what he said. He said, let's see if I can do 10. Ooh, That's a very that reasonable touch. thing to say. Never touch yes. Joe. Okay, go ahead. All right. Okay. And look All right, at Joe's see. face. Ready? One. Tom Green, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. You now, Tom Green proceeds to do like Gavin McKinnon's. I'm looking at a solid 7.6. Gavin McKinnis style. Gavin thought he could do like a thousand push-ups too. He's just doing them. It's like, I shouldn't be able to do push-ups better than people. I really, I hate that when somebody has improper form, they're looking down at the ground, they're all over well, the place. Why don't you do some push-ups right now? You know what? Let's get... I would never <laughs> degrade myself in this manner. You see me in this shot and that's all. So here's Tom Green doing the push-ups. Joe is furious. He'll be appearing at a truck stop near you. Uh, if oh you. Oh my God! And look, Tom Green's the dog. dog. Is so cute. And this is exactly what dogs do when you start doing push-ups. They go, "What's going on? You okay?" Look at that dog. What's going? On? What's he doing? What's he doing on the floor like me? I love a dog. It's like chewing. Or in try to Upper blow Northern you. Utah, near the trailhead, holla at him. Uh, he has a podcast. It's, uh, oh my God. What were those noises? Oh, that was her. Oh my God. A pathetic get up by green. Your dog was shaking her ears. A flop, a flop. I thought it was your back cracking. I just did 10, 10 pushups. Congratulations. I, th I literally oh, thought that was your couldn't back. couldn't care a little less. Congratulations. <laughs> Joe could do like a thousand pushups with one hand, like super rapid. So he's like, oh, I fucking hate people who aren't built like a tank. Cracking. No, no. I was Charlie like, he's going to die, to okay. and it's going to be my fault that I didn't stop him. Oh, uh, Charlie. Charlie. Chopper. Bro, her name is Chopper. Chopper. Yeah. Joe mistakenly called his dog Charlie Chopper like eight times <laughs> and then realized it, and Tom didn't say anything, and now Joe calls his dog Chopper as if he's like owning it, but it's still really disrespectful. Don't Call the dog dis by the right name. Nanger Somebody a dog. disrespected our dog the other day. I'm not going to tell that story. I'll tell it on the next small talk. Perfect. No, Joe. <laughs>
Thanks, man. Thank you, Tom Green. Listen, thank you originally for inspiring. Okay, so you're going, oh, they're wrapping it up. It's 4.13. But then you look at the time because you go, this show don't end until 4.36. <laughs> so wait a minute here. These are the closing arguments here. Well, thank you, Tom Green. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. Let's listen to this. But why is there 20 more minutes of runtime after the goodbye? Hiring me because you really did. The day that Red Band and I went to your studio and I saw your house and how you had it set up, that was pot cake dog. That's what it is. A pot cake dog because it eats rice out of Bolivians. <laughs> One of the I've first seeds that, that were, uh, and I was on Fear Factor back then, but I remember wandering around your, your place, how you had it set up, and you, you we were go. very gracious and very. Hospital. So here's his guilt, the end of the show. Guilt. Okay, I've treated you like crap the whole time. So now, oh, you're an inspiration. You're the best. I just want to, are you sure? Do you understand yeah, that you're the best? He carries this on for like 10 minutes because yeah. I have another time code, yes. 423, where he's still doing Continuing. the same thing. So, so we look can at just this. this. Well, one. let's hear a little bit here. Then you'll see Joe is very nervous that he's dis. dissed. Tom Green, okay. And took us around. You were an awesome host and you were. And you were so happy that you did this. You wanted to show everybody. It was a cool thing. It was like we left there going, God, first of all, God damn, how nice is Tom Green? We both said that. And they were like, how cool is what he's doing? Like it made me think that that could be done. Like, so Red Band and I, we whoa. were in. So this is crazy. 30 million people watching. And they're talking Red Band. That's a subject for another time. But imagine that. The stupidest, literally one of the stupidest people on the planet, somehow worked his way into the spotlight in front of 30 million people. Brian, the dummy red band. So we jumped to 423. This is 413. Let's jump to 423. Oh my gosh. Well, listen, this is amazing. Tom Green, stay gold, pony boy. <laughs> Joe. It's always good hanging out with you, my friend. Joe. And again, thank you for everything. Thank you for being Joe. one of the most important uh, Joe. initial inspirations. I love you, you Joe. Part. I love you too, Tom. I Ray. love you. I love you too. Okay. Fakehandshake.com. You ever been to that Instagram page? Look at that. Look at this. I really do. I love you. I, I appreciate it. You've always and been a good guy. Yeah. Always. Yeah. I've known you for two decades now. Well, You've always been likewise, super cool. Thank so we're you. only at 423. We got... 4.36, we get 10 more minutes here. Over 10 more minutes here. Now, this sounds like they're wrapping up again. We do have one final yeah. Joe Rudeness code. Joe Rudeness. He should change his name. Hi, I'm Joe Rudeness. This is the last one. Okay, what time? 4.32.00. Oh, oh. 4.32.00. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. They're <laughs> arguing about something, and Joe is putting his hand they're out now. They're arguing about if John Claude Van Damme really did the splits between the two Yeah, buses. we should have said that. If we said that, we'd be fine. Okay, here. Can do it. They've definitely done it. Do you think but that's it's real? I think he definitely did Watch it. Watch Joe's hands. He's definitely capable of doing that. So I think that he was real supported, supported by some sort of a safety <laughs> harness. The question is okay, whether or not this... But still... This but like the, the, oh, sure. the, the image you're looking at oh. is him yes. supported by a safety harness. Wow. Uh, I, I don't know why he did that. Did I click out of there? Harness. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And then CGI out. Right, let's see that again. That's talk to the hand. I don't give him a damn. Yes. Supported by a safety harness. Yes, 100%. That's unacceptable. You don't <laughs> go like this. So he was at his wit's end, right? That is like Do when we have another fight. time code here? No, keep playing. Keep playing. Yeah. And then CGI'd out. But, or they, or, or uh, whatever, so like chroma keyed out or whatever the hell they fucking the safety call harness it. is just so he didn't fall. They're saying, See Jamie's yeah. saying. Um, I believe that too. I would imagine it would take I a little. I would imagine Whoa. it would take a little bit of the weight off, and I think yeah. that would help his ankles. Yeah, well, this, okay. I mean, <clears throat> the PR right, guy so. said the stunt. Listen, the PR off. guy can yeah, eat. I know so. a whole <laughs> bag. O. he can eat a whole bag. O. because you know, <laughs> PR guys are always. On Excuse me. <laughs> so Joe thought he was going to try out a new phrase. <laughs> so they're like, well, the PR guy says that it's real. And Joe goes, well, the PR guy could eat a whole big old bag o, And he wanted to say bag o dicks. You've heard this phrase, right? Of course. But Joe knows, I don't say the term bag o dicks. That's not me. Who does? So he cuts himself off mid bag o, <laughs> But then... Realizes how stupid that is and decides if I add a second bag oh, they'll think I just mean he is a bag. Watch <laughs> this again. Chroma keyed out or whatever the hell they fucking the safety call harness it. is just so he didn't fall, they're saying. See Jamie's yeah. saying. Um I believe that too. I would imagine it would take I a little I would imagine it would take a little bit of the weight off. 
And I think that would help his ankles. Yeah, well, this, okay. I mean, <clears throat> the PR Wait, guy sorry. said the stunt is the real. The PR guy can yeah, eat I know. a whole <laughs> bag O. He can eat a whole bag O. Cause he <laughs> oh, bag O? Hey, can I get a bag O? A little bag O chips. A bag O what? You're a f***ing O. Get it? Capiche? You know, PR guys are always honest. The, the point is, it's oh, way more... Oh, <clears throat> You're lucky it's just Tom Green sitting across from you, not me. <laughs> You'd be smoked. What do we got next? That was the last code was I wrote it? down, but you could go to the very end and see yeah. how they ended off. Let's see how they get out of here. I, I really do want to say, um, <laughs> oh. I'm oh. so proud of you. This is the congratulations. end. Congratulations. You've just done some, ama it's just amazing to see how great this is you're doing. And I love you, man. And I love you too, buddy. And I'm, I'm, I appreciate, I appreciate you. Like you, you, you know, being, being cool all, all of these years. You're I always, appreciate you've you being cool, been cool too. Every you, time I meet you, you're always been cool. And you, know? you have with me as well, man. And that's why we're, yeah. we're, we're good friends to this day. Yeah. And, <laughs> and again, thank you because you're, you're <sighs> doing your show. This is the with, fifth time. They've literally been going over this for like 45 minutes. Back and forth. And th no, thank you. You're an inspiration to me. Just come on. No. You're an inspiration to me. Just shut up. It was one of the very first things that inspired me to do this. 100%. Thanks, Absolutely. Man. You're the fucking man. Tom Green, ladies and gentlemen. Check out his Tom. What is it? Tom Green uh, podcast. Tom Green interview. And, you. And, uh, and of course, The Van Life, which yeah. is on YouTube. Tom Green. TomGreen.com. Just... Much respect, my brother. Love you. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen, Good and non-gender, non-binary people. Good night, everybody. Mwah, 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 mwah. The guilt kiss. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's like I love your face. It's you feel guilt. You feel like the audience is going to turn on you, so you got to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, guys, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. No, you bombed. You were cruel. What a fucking. And bag now you're trying to win us over. What a bag o. <laughs> Lock him up. Another edition of. He's so stupid. Oh, really, I'm looking dude? At a solid <laughs> 7.6. I think that's going to be it for us today. I think that's a good place to stop here. What will Joe Rogan ask? Is it me or is he being an ass?